<clears throat> so, I don't have anything planned. Just overall, no, fuck, I can't. This is so hard, I don't know what to say. Okay, seriously, look how cute. Look at this. Look how cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I stopped petting him and he got upset. I don't even know what take this is anymore. I seriously have no idea how many times I've recorded this, but I'm gonna say that this is the one. Now, um, before I get into uh, the topics of the video, I would just like to say um, that what I say may not speak to you. Um, maybe the things that work for me may not work for you, um, but I would just like to say to keep an open mind, to keep an open heart. Um, I'm just being completely honest. I have no script. I did not even plan what I was going to think or say. Um, I just kind of wanted to come on here and do this because if it helps at least one person, I'll be happy. Um, so, um, you know, keep an open mind that I'm a very artistic person and that's how I express myself. And yeah, I think that's the thing I had to say before. Now, Dealing with a loved one's cancer diagnosis. Um, the person in my life uh, that was diagnosed with cancer was my mom. She was diagnosed uh, a year ago, April of 2017, and um, it's been a rough year. <laughs> Over the year, we've uh, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and. Um, went through treatment and surgery and uh, she is cancer free now so that's very good so I will say that um, in the start um, for you guys to know um, but I will start with uh, with getting her diagnosis so when she told me um, man I it's almost like my brain has blocked it out it's like a faint memory <laughs> Um, I remember I was in the bathroom <laughs> peeing and my boyfriend uh, heard me on the phone crying and he came in the bathroom and uh, I just remember like I had just hung up the phone after she told me because I didn't cry on the phone with her. I was very like strong while I was on the phone. I tried to be. I was just like yeah we'll figure this out you know I was like did my best but as soon as I hung up the phone I just broke down. And um, it was a really fucked up moment in my life because it's like weird to comprehend in the sense that like sometimes you like you hear about this happening to people but you don't think it's gonna like happen to you or someone you know and um, especially when it's like someone that you look up to so much like your mom I don't know how many of you are so close to your mom, but my mom is like my best friend. So uh, it was really, it was a really, really hard thing. And um, now dealing with her diagnosis was something that I didn't know how to do at the start. And not that I didn't know what to, how to do it, that I didn't want to do anything about it. I just wanted to just sulk and be miserable and. Um, there was a lot of nights that I couldn't sleep, that I just stayed up at night crying, like wondering why and what I could do and researching and don't do that by the way. Because <laughs> um, every story, especially with cancer, is completely unique. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a really, really hard adjustment to make in my life. But once I realized that, I guess this is a point that you're at if you're searching for this video, that I realized like I need help and I need a way to cope with this. Um, that's where I found a few things that I'm going to talk about now. Like I said, I didn't write any of this down and I'm going to try not to edit this so it's very natural um, as much as I can. Um, but so the first thing that I s sought out was support groups. And at first I was really like 
iffy about it just because it's like a support group. I think it's just a stigma behind it. I didn't wanna, it made it real in a way um, that I needed support for something. Now I resisted, but once I went, it was, it was, it was enriching. The people in the group were uh, cancer patients and friends. Now, because I live in a different province in Canada that my mama wasn't able to do these things with her, I had to do them on my own and in the BC Cancer Society, where she's in Manitoba. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed the atmosphere. I feel like it was really, really important to hear other stories. Um, I felt like definitely seeking communication is the most important thing and remembering that to talk about it isn't a bad thing and it's not it doesn't have to be awkward and it doesn't have to be sad um, and it's a learning experience for a lot of people and um, as sad and as difficult as this time is um, we have to remember our loved ones Now, if I did have my mom in the same province, I would have loved to go to the support groups with her, um, but she wasn't around, um, so I sought out different things. Um, I did also start seeing an art therapist. I thought that, that was very cool and very helpful. If you don't know what art therapy is, I highly suggest looking into it. It's a different approach to therapy um, than just conventional sitting down and talking about it because sometimes people don't like to do that. It's a different way to kind of understand yourself and understand what's going on in your mind without you really even knowing it. And I feel like it's really interesting, so you should definitely look into it if you're interested. Um, so that was something that definitely also really helped. Um, now, the third thing that really helped me was keeping up with the things that gave me fulfillment. Um, things like writing. I wrote a lot. I probably wrote up two, no two full notebooks in a very short period of time because uh, I had so many thoughts that I had to get out and any time that I would feel like tight in my chest I would write out the emotions I was feeling and I would feel that kind of lighten and I felt like that was really important because especially while I was taking care of her for six weeks while she was in treatment you kind of want to be able to compose yourself and take care of them but sometimes it's difficult when they're not healthy it's sad right and you want to just be there for them um, but and you want to be strong but inside you're broken <laughs> so I feel like it's uh, it was a very important thing to be able to have that release since I didn't want to do it in front of her I felt like writing was a very very good way for me to do it um, something else that also very very much helped was um, obviously uh, talking to my friends and talking to my family and making sure that I was getting out all my emotions and making sure that I wasn't bottling things up I felt like that was pro the most important thing because as soon as I was started bottling things up I noticed that the agony started building and the negative thoughts came back now that's the next thing I want to talk about the negative thoughts how do you stop them you can't right like obviously your mind is going to go to the worst like what if this happens what if the worst happens right especially when it comes to like cancer um you never know um will it spread will it stay dormant will it will it never come back right um it's a scary time for everybody especially the person with it um, but us around, it's important for us to keep our thoughts positive for that person. Um, again, I'm, I'm not the patient, I've never gone through cancer myself. This is just completely from somebody that helped her mom go through it, so. Now another thing, now the fourth thing that I feel really uh, helped me through this time was 
going to the gym and working out and staying active. I tried to go to the gym as much as possible, um, especially through the time. While I was with her, it was a little bit harder, but during the time that I wasn't able to be with her, that I was home in Vancouver, I was going to the gym a lot and working out a lot and getting out all my anger physically as I could because you go through waves, right? So when I was angry, I would go to the gym and if I was upset, I would write. And if I felt like I couldn't get my mind to shut the fuck up, I would read a book and get my mind into someone else's life. Or I would play Sims. Ooh, ooh, got a hand cramp. This camera's heavy. Um, or I'd play Sims and get in somebody else's life. Um, so there are many different things, uh, many different outlets. And it's important to know that and remember that they're the ones that are going through it and that your job is to be the support and the guidance guidance of light and remind them of the positive in life even when only negative is around you remind them that they're loved remind them that they have company remind them that they have support and that will do so so much on its own you have no idea the recording stopped so I had to re restart. Um, my grandma would not be happy unless I mention this in the video. It's very important to drink a lot of fresh juice when you're going through chemotherapy. Um, a lot of uh, chemo patients are not don't really have a lot of energy to feed themselves the healthiest meals, so a lot of them will turn to buying food. Um, already made so if you are if you are with someone that's going through cancer that doesn't have someone that can cook for them or clean for them it might be nice to buy a juicer for them that's something that's a little bit easy and um, a very low energy inducing to uh, make for themselves and it's like a little activity that gets them out of bed um, and up on their feet and everything like that so yeah um, Man, I, I feel like I've been rambling for so long. It's, cancer research has developed so much in the last few years. And um, hopefully it's something in the future we won't even have to worry about, you know? Maybe it won't be. Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, and if you guys were wondering, that's why I actually cut my hair as well. Um, my, I did cut my hair when my mom... Um, cut her hair off before she started losing her hair during chemo um, So maybe that is something that you can do for your loved one as well But I wanted to kind of leave the video on a light note and not a sad note So I wanted to uh, wish you all the very best Because I know if you clicked on this video, you're probably not feeling the best right now But just know that you have support and that you know remind the person that you love them and that's this Keeping up the emotional spirit is so important during this time because you can't control anything else. So it's important to keep your thoughts positive. So I'm going to keep all of you guys in my thoughts um, and in my prayers. And uh, again, like I said in the start of the video, use the comment section below um, to write your story, to read a story, to talk, uh, use it as a community. And uh, I'm gonna go show you guys my dog to end the video off so we end it happy. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, please give it a thumbs up or comment down below. I know I was kind of vague, but I just kind of wanted to make this a quick video because if you just found out your loved one's diagnosed, you don't really want to hear someone ramble too much. So I just wanted to give some little tips. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a great day.